Let's make a start then. Um, Mark, this week the government made it clear that fans returning to sporting events um, is, is something that isn't going to be happening anytime soon. What, what's your view? How big an impact does it have on a club like Antill? Well, being candid, without a crowd, there isn't a competition. The, uh, the sport at championship level is uh, not a TV subscription service. As such, most of our money comes from sponsorship, which has been hit hard, and gate money and bar take. And if we don't have a crowd, we don't have the gate money, we don't have the bar take, frankly, you can't run a professional team without it. Would you be willing to play in those circumstances then? I think it would be really difficult because the cost of a professional team and all the medical expenses that go with it, it would put a club of our size under quite extraordinary pressure. Now I think when you look how the government have handled things so far economically, and certainly when you look at the grant that the arts had in July of 1.5 billion, when you consider sport below Premier League football and the contribution it makes to communities that we operate in, is there value there to granting money to get us through the competition? You'd think so and you'd hope so and I think the government record on the economic side has been encouraging since the pandemic broke. So hopefully we don't have to cross that bridge but if we do we'll have to reset and start again I guess. Is, is there any indication yet as to when your season might start? Yeah, so we've uh, the Championship Clubs Committee has been meeting every fortnight or so virtually. The initial start date was put as December 12th, but nothing put in stone. And I guess the decisions of the last 24 hours probably have delayed that. We're due to meet again tomorrow virtually. And I imagine we're probably talking more about the first week in January at the earliest. And we might have to be flexible on that as well. So. You know, we've just got to be in a position where we're, we're positive, but also flexible enough to move if we have to. What, what's the, the general consensus among clubs then at the moment? You, well, you meet regularly? I think there's a, a genuine concern that I think outside of a war, we haven't really experienced anything like this before. So I think all of us understand the challenges we're facing. We all understand the responsibilities we've got in the communities which we operate and invariably the rugby clubs in the towns in the championship are at the very centre of those towns and um, we, we take those responsibilities very seriously so we've got to re remain flexible and, and, and ready to front whatever challenges come our way. How are things with Amped Hill? Well it's you know these, these circumstances have made it difficult for us there's an argument to suggest we're the smallest club in the competition and we, we were three years ahead of our business plan when we came into the competition. To then have the season cut off part way through, and um, the pandemic to then hit, it's put us under a fair degree of pressure. The response from our members and our volunteers has been, you know, really humbling. And um, we've got through and we've coped and we've kept in regular communication. We've got our mini and youth back training now on a Sunday, socially distanced, recognizing all the protocols, which is great to see. So how would I describe us? Listen, it's been a really hard hit. We get that, but we've got through the first hit. If there's a second hit, we'll have to adjust and reset to that as well, won't we? You did have to lose players when um, uh, the season came to an end. Um, to what extent did you have to get rid of, of, of players? Well, it's been sizable. So 16 of our 35-man squad have, have been let go. We've done what we possibly could to find a new club for them. And in most cases, that's happened. We've recruited 10 more in. But as you'd imagine, they're coming in at, uh, at a lower level to the ones that have gone out. We've had to restructure our coaching team, which has been difficult because the guys did a great job last year. As you know, we finished fifth in the competition, which is the highest finish of any promoted club. We're not naive enough to think that uh, we had a couple of the big boys come in that would probably have ended up below that, but we'll take that finish. And uh, it's been difficult for us. So yes, a lot of people have lost their jobs and some more people have been brought in for the coming season. Tell me, what are you doing for income at the moment? 
and well, we haven't got any. So, so, so how, how long can that situation go on? Well, the furlough scheme finishes at the end of October, as you're aware. Something has been announced today which we need to check the detail of. Um, how long can we keep going? That's, uh, listen, we, we've just got to re remain flexible. We've run our club very prudently over the years. We haven't lost any money, we haven't made any money, and if everything that comes in gets reinvested in the sport, and it will continue to be that way. But the government furlough scheme has certainly offset a significant part of the potential danger when the season was, uh, w was closed early. Do you think the government should be supporting rugby clubs, football clubs, sports clubs in, in general? I think the government has supported most sports clubs in general with the furlough scheme. I think the challenges they face, we've never experienced anything like this. So do I think they're going to make some errors? Of course you would. I don't envy them in any way, shape or form having to deal with this silent enemy that we're all fighting. It's not their fault that the virus arrived. How they've handled it, listen, I'm not an epidemiologist, I don't know. But they have been supportive so far and I hope they'll be supportive going forward. The RFU, of course, cut funding to clubs. Um, there is a suggestion that there may be further cuts, perhaps even as far as to say no money from, from the RFU. Where would, where would that leave you? I don't, listen, I don't, I don't think that's a possibility. Yes, funding has been cut, but I think funding's been cut in pretty much every walk of life, every sport, every business. And if you run a sensible business model, you find a way to cope. We run a sensible business model. We've coped so far. The championship is their premier competition that the RFU own. The importance of it should not be underestimated. We make a great, great contribution to the international setup, as Eddie Jones was recently quoted to support. So we're relevant, we're tangible, and I'm sure the RFU, once the pandemic has been dealt with, will continue to support the competition. Hand on heart, when do you think you might play rugby again? You might play championship I would rugby. love to be able to give you an answer. Honestly, I think middle of December, there isn't any real chance. I think early January may be ambitious. I could see some flexibility with crowds over time, but I understand why the Prime Minister did what he did yesterday. When you look at the bounce in infection rates, something had to give so he started that program we've got to be flexible and agile and and and, and uh, continue to to work with the championship clubs committee and rfu to get back as soon as it's safe for us all to do so you meet again tomorrow um what are you expecting to come out of that meeting a discussion about when we start the season primarily yeah. and the exec are in regular communication with the rfu those communications have been very open very honest and very candid and uh, I'm sure that we'll all find a conclusion that that you know the safety and well-being of our players is our first responsibility and our supporters is the second responsibility we won't do anything unless it's safe to do so do you remain optimistic and is it difficult in these times to stay optimistic listen I don't I don't think there's we can't do anything else we have to be optimistic our game is a great game it makes a huge contribution to UK PLC and it will continue to do so. Um, it's tough right now, of course it is. But the response from our members, supporters and players has been incredible and I'm sure it will be no matter what comes down the pike. And how long would it take you to be ready for a new season? How we need a minimum of eight weeks. I think we shouldn't underestimate the risks to the players. They haven't played since March. Now, they're all on furlough, so they're training on their own. We've had one meeting getting the squad together to brief about the new season. That's all we can do at this point. It's stage one return to play. We need a minimum of eight weeks to be ready to play professional contact. And particularly if at that time, the four time, potential four times European champions, Saracens rock up, those eight weeks will be critical if we ran into them first fixture. You'd want that match with a crowd wouldn't you? Later in the season, please, would be good. So if anybody in the RFU is looking, please put Amptel and Saracens towards the back part of whenever that season starts. 
Uh, Mark, we wish you well. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks um, a lot, guys. Anything you wish? No, it's all good. It's all good.